Hello, everyone. Welcome to Literature for Young Adults for the summer 2020 semester. I'm Dr. Lassane, and I'm going to take a quick run through the syllabus with you, just kind of to get you started. I'm not going to worry too much about this first page because you pretty much know what this information is. It will tell you, however, that um, it will give you my phone number. It will give you uh, my email addresses as well. I will tell you that my phone number uh, is forwarded to my house it's if uh, I'm not in my office. So you can reach me pretty much 24 seven. Um, I have office hours Tuesday from eight to four. Other times will be arranged depending on the quarantine, of course. And I'll also have some Zoom uh, office hours where you can ask questions. So basically that's the, the, the first part of the information here. I'm gonna skip down to the second part of the information, which is textbooks. You have a literature textbook that Karen Perry and I designed a few years ago. We've revised it last year. The table of contents is available at this link. If it doesn't work for you, please let me know. The table of contents then has hyperlinks to take you to the stuff you need for every chapter. So it's uh, free, which is better than the $75 text, and uh, it'll be there and you can refer to it as often as you like. You have some required text. There are some books that everyone in the class will read, and they're right here. There, there are 11 of them, as you see. You're gonna read Sherman Alexis, uh, the Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. One of the reasons you're going to read it is because it is own voice, uh, which is a way of designating that it's a story about Native Americans written by a Native American. You're going to read Laurie Holtz Anderson's Speak. You can read the graphic novel version of Speak, or you may read Shout, which is her uh, novel about how Speak came to be. You're going to read, Laura, um, I'm sorry, Ruth Behar's Lucky Broken Girl. Um, it's got a Cuban family, kind of a mixed race family actually, is the main characters. And it's the story of a girl who is injured in a car accident and how it kind of takes her view on the world a little differently. You'll read Nancy Garden's Annie on My Mind, the first book to go to the Supreme Court and be designated appropriate for young adults. You're going to read uh, C. Left's Celebrate Your Body Too. Uh, it's a really nice uh, book on um, sex, developing bodies, all that good stuff like that. Monster by Walter Dean Myers is also on this list. It's the first book to win the Prince Award from uh, Yalsa, and so it's important for that reason, but it's also um, an important author. Walter Dean Myers is uh, an was, I should say, African-American. He wrote dozens of books for children and for young adults. You're gonna read The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Um, it is the first in a trilogy called the Chaos Walking Trilogy. And it's the story of a futuristic world where things aren't quite what they seem. You're going to read Isabel Quintero's Gabby, A Girl in Pieces from Cinco Puntos Press. Uh, an, another wonderful book by an Hispanic author about an Hispanic main character. You read Margine Sartrapi's Persepolis. It is one in a series of graphic novels about growing up under different kinds of circumstances. You'll read Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give, which won just a slew of awards the year that it was uh, put out. Uh, this, it was a first novel. It certainly is a commanding novel. It's also been made into a movie. And finally, you're going to read Jason Reynolds' Stamped. Uh, it's about racism, and it's an incredible, incredible book. Um, then you're going to select one book from each of the following authors for young adult readers. So Kwame Alexander, Chris Crutcher, Robert Cormier, uh, Amy King, A.S. King, Andrew Smith, John Green, and Elizabeth Acevedo and six books from these different lists. Best Fiction for Young Adults, Quick Picks for Young Adults, Prince or Prince Honor, Excellence in Nonfiction for Young Adults, Great Graphic Novels for Teens, and Outstanding Books for the College Bound. All the lists may be, fine, but may be found at that URL, and the list uh, books have to be between 2016 and 2020. 
and uh, you will also read one New York Times bestseller book uh, from December 2019 through May 2020. The copyright of the book has to be 2018 through 2020. Little asterisk here saying you can read any of these books in audio or read them in e-format. So if you're having trouble accessing the books, you might want to see if you can borrow them from interlibrary loan, if you can get them in e-format temporarily. I know that with um, the quarantine results, it may be difficult to find books. So I really would challenge you to start finding those books now. I'm not gonna go through the objectives for the course. You may certainly read those yourself. You need to have a TK20 for the course. And probably most important here in this first little descriptive part is that you have to maintain as a graduate student at least a 3.0 GPA on all graduate level courses. So that's B and above. If you earn a grade of C in any course within the library science program, you may have his or her graduate status reviewed by the department committee. The committee will recommend an appropriate, an appropriate remediation and if you earn two grades of C, you'll be terminated from graduate studies. If you earn one F, you'll be terminated from graduate studies as well. I don't think that's gonna to apply to everybody, anybody in the course, but I do want you to be aware of, especially the grade of C. So let me go through the assignments with you. The first thing you're gonna do is you're reading autobiography. It's worth 100 points. You can kind of see right here. Okay, so, so you know that this is an assignment to take seriously. You're going to write your reading autobiography, which is basically an account of how you grew up to be a reader, or if it's true, a non-reader, although I'm assuming that most of you in this class do like books and reading. It kind of makes sense. Um, you can talk about people that you remember in your young reading life. Who was it that read to you, if anybody? How do you think you learned to read? What about the titles and authors and genres of the books you read growing up? So you're going to talk about your memories from childhood, early childhood, through tween years and teen years, and now what do you like to read as an adult? So you're going to talk about all of those things. I've got all these questions in here that will guide you in how to kind of take it. I've given you a couple of examples at... Um, live binders and we'll get to that in just a minute so you'll be able to see there are lots of different ways to do it this one's due pretty quickly june 2nd but i don't intend for you to spend a lot of time i want you to write this just following the questions you may um, write it as a formal example you may do all kinds of different things i've seen s'mores i've seen powerpoints a couple of people have done videos uh sketch notes so whichever kind of works for you, you may do. The second set of assignments are your textbook reflections. So as you read the textbook, remember that's the one that's online. As you read the textbook, think of each um, link as a chapter and you'll see there, there are numbers in front of them. So you'll write a blog entry that summarizes the content of the chapter. Additionally, you should reflect on the content and how it either has or will affect how you read and evaluate young adult literature. The due dates for those are as follows. Chapters one through five by June 9th, chapters six through 10 by June 16th, and chapters 11 through the end by June 23rd. Uh, these come pretty quickly, but do understand that the chapters themselves are fairly short. In many cases, you're following a link that will take you to some descriptions that you need to have. Next, you're going to blog. The blog is for um, the the blog is for I'm sorry the blog is for the 25 books that you've read for the course. They're up there. They're listed in the syllabus at the very front. Those are the required books that are listed at one through eleven, and then reading from the particular authors are there as well. In order to do a blog, you have to have the following pieces of information. You need to do a bibliograph bibliographic citation using correct APA format. If you don't know APA format, you can Google it. You'll find a, a link, I think, to OWL, which is a wonderful website, and it will show you how to do uh, APA format for your book. You need to have a cover of the book, 
And when you're selecting a cover, whether it's from Google or from Amazon or Tidal Wave or some other source, the JPEG that you pick, the picture, has to be at least 300 by 300 DPI. Um, if you don't have something that quality, it's going to be a pixelated thing when you stick it into your blog. You need to have a summary of the book that includes the ending, a discussion of the book using the criteria from the textbook or who do you think the audience is, what was your favorite or least favorite part, and finally connections, book trailers, other books along a similar theme, other books by the author or within the genre. So you can see you have these distinct points that you have to do for each of the blog posts. This also is divided up into sections. Books 1 through 8 are due July 14th. Books 9 through 16, July 21st. Books 17 through 25, July 28th. And finally, you're going to do the TK20 assignment, which you're going to uh, submit both to TK20 and to the Blackboard. Uh, this is an assignment about censorship and rationale, and here are the directions for doing it. I don't know that I have to go through it all the way. Uh, I think it's really self-explanatory uh, what you have to do. So I'm going to kind of let you go through that, and if you have questions again, get in touch with me. That is due July 7th, earlier in the um, course. Grades. There are 400 points available for the course. You earn 360 or more, and that's a 90%. You get an A. You earn 320 up to 359, that's a B. If you earn 280 through 319, that's a C. And remember that policy that Cs are not something that you want to go after. And finally, if you score below 280 points overall, that's an F. Uh, there's a schedule here, but it really doesn't have anything to do uh, with us because the only schedule you have are the due dates. So don't worry about that. Uh, maybe some other schedules might be uh, voluntary Zoom meetings down the line. We'll see how that all goes and what kind of questions you have. I have um, done some screencasts, including this one, uh, for the course. Uh, so I think that you'll be able to handle everything that's been asked. I'm not going to go through all these policies. I ask that you read them. Uh, one of them that you might want to put a star beside is late work. Uh, I don't take it on a normal basis. Of course, with all the stuff going on right now with quarantines, who knows how normal the semester will be. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The rest of these are policies about disabilities and all that other kind of stuff. There's some information here about the Texas pretest, and you might want to take a look at that. There's uh, Title IX information here as well. So that's basically the syllabus. If you have questions about the syllabus itself, it's a good thing to ask questions now uh, before you start working uh, on it. Ask, is this what you want? Am I correct in assuming this? I'm happy to answer questions. You can either email them to me. You can call me. You have that phone number already. I also have virtual office hours. You can leave a question there and I'll get to it. Or uh, you can save it to where we have a Zoom meeting. So that's the syllabus for young adult literature. This is a 10 week course. So it's going to come fast uh, and you're going to have to really work hard to kind of keep up with all the due dates. Normally this is a 15 week semester in the fall and spring, but 10 is the best we can do right now uh, for, the, for the summer camp, uh, summer semester. I'll, I promise you I'll be a little bit more articulate later. I'm having problems with my voice. I think I have kind of a little bronchitis thing going on. It's really pleasant. Anyhow, that's everything you need to know. Um, I'm going to go right back up to the top. My name's Terry Lassane. I'm the professor for this course. And somewhere I'm going to put uh, some kind of screencast or something else to tell you a little bit more about me. So welcome to the class. I'm sure that everybody will do well. I'm sure that you will ask questions if you have them. I'm absolutely ready for that to happen. So let's have a great semester together, guys.